Buffer's Evolution, a game I kept describing as a fuse between Sonic and Metroid. As you know, in this series we're going to be taking a look at gems on the Wonder Swan that fulfill three basic requirements. One, can you play and understand it as an English or as a non-Japanese speaker? Two, is it fun? And three, very important question, is it worth the price? However, if you find yourself wondering what the Wonder Swan is, it's time to backtrack to our first Wonder Swan video. In it, we review the Japan-only system, we talk about its quirks and even some of its history, so click the screen if you haven't already watched it. Make sure to watch that first, and then come on back. Gameplay. You pick your mechanized, anthropomorphic animal, and you select a level. Your character is thrust into the stage, and you race through looking for checkpoints that also function to refill your health. Now, I've completed this game, and when you replay a level, all the numerical checkpoints just appear as health stations. I wanted to showcase the checkpoints as if I was playing it for the first time uh, via emulator, but then this happened. Okay, so let me explain. The only dedicated Mac emulator for Wonderswan that I could find was Oswan. It's awesome, except for one thing. Now, there's two sets of directional buttons on the Wonder Swan, and in this emulator, they're combined. So in Buffer's Evolution, Y4 pulls up a map, but X4 moves left. But because they're combined, you move slightly left, but it basically pauses the game constantly. It's impossible to play, because you're never allowed to actually traverse left. Unfortunately, my PC is busted, so I can't showcase the game how I originally wanted to. Otherwise, the emulator is awesome. It works great, generally. The, the compatibility is very high. But if you have a game where both sets of directional buttons do different things, you're kind of screwed. Anyway, so you find all the checkpoints. There's 10 per level. And once you do, you're rewarded with a new ability. The first ability you receive allows your legs to morph into a wheel, allowing you to traverse the level at even greater speeds. Soon after, there's water abilities, the ability to hover, flying abilities, etc. Finishing the first set of levels reveals another, and then another, and then another, and then another. All the while, you're earning new abilities. Furthermore, you can equip two per level per playthrough, so this gives each level a ton of replayability because you can play it in totally different ways with totally different power-ups. Not all of these upgrades are even necessary, but they are fun, and it's also kind of where my Metroid comparison comes into play. So you're constantly upgrading, you're looking for hidden items. There's three hidden items per level. And also the enemies, many of them look really similar to Metroids. Most of the enemies just sit or float in a specific location. They harm you if you touch them, obviously. But jumping on them propels you forward. Now with the focus on speed, the speed-based power-ups, and the baddies functioning as bounce pads, this is kind of where I got the Sonic comparison from. When you do become damaged, your suit slash body turns progressively dark and your avatar begins to short out. Uh, this is really annoying, it kills the speed, so basically what you have to do is just look for health checkpoints. I don't actually think you can die in this game, I've actually never died. There's not really too much of a focus on combat, in fact there's not even bosses at the end of the level, but I think for this type of game it still works. Additionally, each level is timed, but it isn't really a countdown time. You can't run out of time. It's solely for the purpose of replayability. The control is damn near spot on. You have numerous abilities to get used to, though. They all control a little bit differently, but they all control well. My only complaint is that you do have to cycle through your abilities, so sometimes you'll be moving along and then you'll turn into a plane and you'll be in water or something will happen where it's not the right ability for the right terrain and it'll stop you dead. So it does kill the speed when this happens, but logically it does make sense. Graphics and presentation. As with most original Wonder Swan titles, I do wish this game was in color, but everything does look sharp. The characters are all generic cyborg animals, but it works fine. The levels are well designed. Again, this is a fast game. Now, I played this game on the Swan Crystal, uh, so I can't really say if there were any ghosting issues on the original Wonder Swan with this game. Now, keep in mind that the Swan Crystal has an updated LCD screen that increases contrast and reduces ghosting, so I can only speak for how I personally have played it. Now, while we're on the topic of presentation, let's talk a little bit about the music. Now, there aren't too many tunes in Buffer's Evolution. There are just a handful, and they tend to repeat themselves. However, the music that is here is pretty good. Not amazing, but pretty good. It does a good job of keeping that upbeat, kind of happy, fast-paced feel, and it works. So, 
Can you play and understand this game as an English speaker or as a non-Japanese speaker? Of course, it's completely accessible to a non-Japanese speaker. In fact, it was the first Wonderswan game that I actually really got into. Is it fun? If you are a fan of Sonic with a little Metroid sprinkled in, I think you're going to love this game. In fact, I think any fan of platformers would enjoy this game. Is it worth the price? Here's the best part. Many of the most playable games on the Wonderswan, at least for English speakers, are expensive. You know, as I mentioned before, uh, the Mega Man game that I reviewed often goes for more than $50. The Mr. Driller game that I reviewed goes for anywhere between $20 and $40. This game goes for around $8 to $10. That doesn't include shipping, but regardless, it's well worth it. Now, just to be absolutely sure, let's check in with Prince John. Well, there you have it. Buffer's Evolution is a great game, and we here at H4G consider it a must-have for the Wonderswan. If you like this review, check out our other Wonderswan videos as well. Hope you enjoyed, and thank you very much for watching.